Hi guys, this is Sadek from Webdin.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash various GSI ROMs on your Samsung phone. So as you might be aware, the usual route of flashing any GSI ROM is to flash the system IMG file in the system partition in the fastboot D mode. But that is not the case with Samsung phone because in Samsung phone, you might not be able to access the fastboot D mode. Likewise, there is not even the fastboot mode. So you cannot disable the Android verified boot and disable the AVB. So we'll have to take a different approach. Regarding with, with there are three approaches, you would either use the blank VB meta, the PID file or the tf 2 rp recovery. As of now, I'll be using the recovery method because it's the easiest of the three. So please check a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. Do note that as, as of now, I'll be flashing the GSI ROM on my Galaxy S20 FE, but it may and may or may not work on any other Samsung phone. Chances are it will work because it should be supported across all the triple supported devices. So regarding that, first and foremost, install the Triple Info app from Play Store. Once you have installed the Triple Info app, launch the app. Go to the Details tab and please make sure that it's showing as supported the product Triple. If it's supported, then the GSI ROM should be installed onto your phone. You may try either of the three methods, but for now, I'll be having a look at the recovery method. So with that in mind, please take a backup of all the data on your phone. And then let's get started. So these are the various ROM which will be flashing. First off, we'll flash the Arrow OS, then the AOSP ROM, the clean stock UI experience. Then the Miku OS, Pixel OS, Pixel Experience Plus, CR Droid, Lineage OS, Triple Droid, Lineage OS Lite, Dove Face, Project Elixir and Android 13. Do note that there isn't any Android 14 GSI ROM for the Samsung S20 FE. So I might not be able to flash it. It's still only till Android 13.1. But that said, the flashing of the GSI ROMs are the same steps. So it either is Android 12, 13 or 14. The flashing step will be the same. And over here you could see all the features which are working and which are not working. So the clause means that we haven't yet checked it. It does not mean that it's not working. So the not working in case you will get the unavailable or not working message. So with that in mind, let's now get started with the flashing process. First off, I'll show you how to flash the Arrow OS GSI ROM. So in this regard, your first course of action is to get hold of the GSI ROM, either the GApps or the vanilla build. So for now, I'm using the GApps build. So get hold of the ROM file from here and now you have to extract the ROM file. So for that you could use the 7-zip software. So let me show you the GSI will be in the .imd.xz format. Right click on it and choose. Then show more option and select 7-zip and extract to arrowverse.img. Once that is done you will get the IMG file. So copy the IMG file and transfer it inside the platform tools directory. Which should take just a few seconds. Ok so I don't have enough space. That's not a cause of concern. I'll show you later on. So as of now, let's move ahead with the next step. So now you have to install the RP recovery onto your phone. So let me show you the guide for that as well. The flashing of the recovery on Samsung phones is somewhat different. So you could either use the multi disabler or the FB disabler method depending on the phone which you own. In my case, I have to use the FB disabler. But for most of the Samsung phones, the usually the older Samsung phone use the multi disabler. So I'll show you both the methods, but in my case, I have to use the FB disabler. In this regard, my first course of action is to unlock the bootloader. So for that, I have again made a separate guide and a video on the same. You could refer to a guide and the video and get this job done. Simply boot your phone to the fast boot mode or rather the download mode via the ADB reboot download command. And from the download mode, you have to long press the volume up key to unlock the bootloader and then your phone will boot to the OS. Once that happens, go online and make sure to verify that the OEM unlocking is grey out and enabled. Once that is done, the bootloader will be unlocked. But do know that it will trip the NOX as well and NOX is a hardware component. So there is no going back. Even if you re relock the bootloader, the NOX will stay remain tripped. And you might not be able to use the Samsung Pay and all such features. So if that's well and good, then you may unlock the bootloader. You may also check out my video as well. Once you have unlocked the bootloader on your phone, you will now have to Download the recovery file, so either get hold of it from the official website of the WRP or from a third party trusted site like XDA. So the recovery will be in a tar format. Apart from that, you will also need a disable VB meta tar file as well. So the both the VB meta patch tar file and the recovery will either be there on the WRP website or the XDA website. So as of now, I've got both the files. Next up, download the Odin and extract them onto your PC. So let me launch the Odin tool as well. I might already be having it. So it will be in a flash tool, Odin. This is the Odin tool and you will get the following four files. 
so after that you will now have to boot your phone to the download mode i made a separate guide on the same as well there are around four to five methods of getting this job done but for now i'll be using the easiest method which is universally applicable across all the phones so i'll use the adb command to get this job done so for the adb command method you have to enable the developer options and usb debugging on your phone as well so first of get hold of the android sdk platform tools for my guide and extract them onto your pc you may extract them anywhere you want in my case i have done so in c drive and these are the files of platform tools once you've done the extraction you will now have to enable usb debugging and oem unlocking the oem unlocking will already be enabled on your phone so let's just enable the debugging so go to the settings menu on your phone then go to about phone software information and tap on build number seven times you will get a prompt that you are now a developer or the mode has been enabled so go back again go back then go to developer options and enable the toggle next to usb debugging tap on ok likewise make sure that the oem unlocking is enabled and gray out as well so let's give it a few more seconds so as you could see currently in my case the oem unlocking is missing so that's not a major cause of concern although the booter is unlocked but the oem unlocking is currently missing so what you have to do is go online it will take just a few seconds for for that to happen and connect your phone to the wi-fi and then wait for a few more seconds and then the oem unlocking toggle will come back so just give me a few seconds the wi-fi is connected and now i'll have to check out the result as well until then unless you get the oem unlocking toggle gray out so now it's gray out and now only i can flash the rom if that is not the case with you then please wait for a few more seconds until you get this gray out likewise the debugging should also be enabled once you have enabled the debugging let's verify the same so go to the address bar of platform tools type in cmd and hit enter this will launch command prompt inside platform tools now type in adb devices and verify that you are getting an id if you are not getting any id then unplug and replug your phone from the pc disable and re-enable usb debugging tap on revoke usb debugging use the official usb cable that came with your phone and use the usb 2.0 port on your pc so carry out these usb fixes and verify that you are getting an id once you are getting this id you next course of action is to use the command adb reboot download and your phone should now reboot into the download mode which should take just a few seconds and once it's in the download mode we could then proceed ahead and flash the recovery file onto our phone so we are done with the step 4 now go with the step 5 and so now you have to launch the odin tool onto your pc as well so for that go to the odin folder and launch the exe file you will get a prompt click on ok and first and foremost go to the option tab and uncheck auto reboot this is extremely important now make sure that your phone is shown here under the com port in my case is the com 4 any com will do just make sure it's shown here likewise in the log as well it should show as added it's the 04 which is the log which is the com port 4 once that is done now clip on ap and choose the twrp.tar file likewise then click on user data and select the vbmeta patch.tar file again i'm repeating in the ap is the recovery file and in the user data it's the vbmeta patch file once that is done click on the start button the flashing will now start and will take only around 10 to 12 seconds for that to finish and once that is done you will now have to press and hold the volume down and power key for around 7 seconds and as soon as the phone is about to restart then press and hold the power and the volume up keys so first press and hold the power and volume down keys so let's do that and as soon as your phone is about to restart then press and hold the power and the volume up keys so currently i'm pressing the volume down and power keys and now i'll press the volume up and power keys the timing of the power keys is extremely important so you may press it for four to five seconds and then let go of the keys so if you end up messing the timing then your phone will boot to the stock os and the custom recovery will be replaced by the stock recovery so please make sure that you are pressing the keys at the right time and let's now verify the result if we are booting into the TWRP recovery then the flashing has been done successfully but if your phone boot to the stock recovery then you have to flash it once again and make sure to check the timing of the hardware key combinations so with that said the flashing first half of the flashing of the recovery is now done and now i'm using the fb disabler method so in case of fb disabler you have to go to wipe advanced wipe check mark key data key refugee metadata and data and swipe to wipe these four partitions i have given the four partition over here as well and after that you will have to also do a format data to remove the encryption from the storage this is a must but this will also wipe off all the data from your phone so make sure you have taken a backup beforehand so go to format data type in yes enter blue check mark 
and once the firmware data is complete you will have to do a reboot to re recovery as well this is again compulsory and not optional so first of all wipe the these four partition then do the format data which will remove the encryption from the phone and then restart to recovery to remount the data partition and with that the fv disabler method is complete on the other hand if you are using the multi disabler method so in that case after flashing the recovery you will have to go to the advanced terminal section and from there type in multi disabler so let me show you advance and go to the terminal type in multi disabler and you, your phone will now resize the vendor partition ask you to run the disabler again so again type in multi disabler and hit enter and after that do a format data and your reboot to recovery and that's it so again i'm re repeating in case of multi disabler you will first have to go to advanced terminal type in multi disabler and once again type in multi disabler and after that do a format data and reboot to recovery and that's just about it so with that said we are now inside the recovery and as of now our phone should be blank because we have done a format data so now you have to transfer the gsi rom img file onto your phone so this is the rom file let's copy it from here and transfer the file onto your phone so let's do that so in some cases your phone might not be shown onto your pc whereas in in other cases your phone might be shown but the storage might be blank so in both these cases you may also use the adb push command to get the job done simply use the command adb push file name which is rom.img let's suppose space forward slash sd card and the rom file will now be transferred inside the sd card which is the internal storage of your phone just make sure to place the rom img file inside the platform tools directory and the file will now be transferred apart from that you may also use the usb otg device if you have so with that said the file is not being transferred and will take only a few seconds so let's just wait for that to complete so guys the file is now been transferred onto our phone let me just verify it once so as you could see the file is now there to verify it go to install tap on install image and as you could see we have now got the img file so you could now flash the file onto your phone and let's now flash the gsi rom so again i'm repeating by default you will get the install zip option so go to install tap on install image and you will then get the img file so simply choose the img file and after that choose the system partition of your phone system image and swipe to flash the best part is the flashing will take only around four to five seconds usually the gsi rom takes around four to five minutes but in case of samsung phone as you could see the image has been flashed within four to five seconds this is quite a fast flashing and once that is done again do a format data just to be on safer side so go to wipe format data type in yes and hit the blue check mark the format data is now complete and tap on reboot system and your phone will now reboot to the os the first boot up will take up some time that is completely normal and nothing to worry about from the subsequent time that will not be the case with that in mind let's just wait for the boot animation or at least the boot logo to appear either of which will signify that the flashing has been done successfully and the boot logo and animation should now appear in a few seconds i don't know how but the flashing of gsi on, on samsung phones is very very fast as opposed to all the other android phones so guys the rom has now booted up and we are now inside the setup process so let's get started as of now i'm skipping the initial setup process if you want you may connect your phone to the wi-fi link your google account and restore all the data but for now i'm skipping all the stuffs and i'm only getting the google setup screen because i flashed the gs build if you flash the vanilla build then you might not get the screen so with that said we are now inside the arrow os and this is the app drawer let's see any additional apps so they are not there it's the only the google apps is there this is the qs tiles and the phs treble settings menu well even that is missing from this not a major cause of concern because we aren't facing any issue as such let me increase the brightness and the three button navigation i want to change it to the gesture navigation so this is there working well and good okay great swipe to take a screenshot let's have a look at that this is also working without any issues then left to check phone tap to check phone quick pull down that is also working volume wake your device using the volume keys so let me check out that so so after enabling this feature you will have to do a ui restart the system ui restart in some cases or in rare cases you might also require a os restart which is completely normal and apart from that wallpaper and style so from here you may change the theming engine as well 
and change the wallpaper or rather the entire UI and UX of the color then you could also go to the basic colors and choose the colors from here as well then if you change the wallpaper on device wallpapers there is only a single wallpaper so if you change the wallpaper then the UI color will change accordingly as well thanks to the multiple UI theming engine with that said let me now stick with the default theming engine and you may enable or disable the dark theme from here as you could see for now let's stick with the dark theme then you can also enable theme icons and the same are implemented as you could see in the home screen app grid you have the maximum of 6 cross 6 but i always use the 5 cross 5 you may also change the font style from here you have a couple of fonts to choose from this font will be applied across the entire ui and ux of the os then you have the shape icon shape again it will be applied across both the home screen and the app drawer so this is the home screen and the app drawer and the icon shape change has taken place and that's just about it as you might be aware the gsi round don't usually have quite a lot of customizations these are the basic tweaks that you will get screen time out display size and text in the aod screen as well and tap to wake on the screen to wake device let me see okay so that is working well and good as well full screen status bar items you may show or hide the items of the status bar from this page and show data usage and adaptive brightness automatic brightness adjustment is also there under privacy you have all these tweaks and that's just about it let's have a look at the home settings so from here you may tweak the few icons as well as the options in the home screen and the app drawer as well then developer options so these are the various tweaks that you could have a look but only try it out if you are aware of what you are doing because this might have some unnecessary complications on the rom as well so let's skip this section for now then you may also use the parallel space and use two instances of the same app for example two instances of the whatsapp or facebook on your phone i don't know why such an important feature is hidden inside this section then apart from that it's the usual tweaks of adding the widgets let's say the clock widgets and you may choose from any one of these styles if i choose this one touch and hold and let's keep it over here and choose the style of the widget so let's choose this clock face and it's now added over here so guys on that note we round off this video if you have any queries with regard to any of the steps do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching